Hi and welcome to BND TV. We have created a series of talks for you entitled The Secrets of Sleep and Success. We are on a mission to empower 1 million people or more harness the awesome power of sleep to dramatically improve the quality of their lives. We hope you enjoy. Welcome to BND TV, the Secrets of Sleep and Success series. And today I've got a whole bunch of people who are alumni from IIM Bangalore. And uh, IIM Bangalore is uh, is one of is actually the first IIM I actually went and taught an out of living course. In. And so it's just next door to us, we, you know, from the ashram. and uh, if i'm not mistaken everybody is from the batch of 2002 on this on this panel and they are all brilliant amazing super successful people in their own right uh, and we are going to talk about sleep and success so guys go ahead let's start so baba if i may actually add we were the illustrious or infamous batch of 2002 and that was the time that the internet bubble had burst and we actually had what's probably the worst placements in history um and here we all are 20 years later i think we're across four or five time zones right now uh on this in this zoom room and it really makes me think you know i've been wondering what is success is it a long term game we're all now so accomplished in whatever we do yeah success it's difficult for anybody it's not difficult it is unfair for anybody to define success for anybody else right what i could consider myself as successful could be very different from what uh, you know kaviraj would consider success for himself uh, so that's exactly what we have done in our book we have given the uh, the we have left the onus to the reader we have allowed you to define your own idea of success and then actually created a road map for uh, for everybody whatever their idea of success is at that point in their life to create a plan and just go for it it's been a long long way to should be right it's been 20 years and we're all over the place um but today's topic is a little bit about sleep and success the success we all have our own affected definition sleep they easy to understand and obviously there is a secret weapon uh when you're slept when you're well slept you're better prepared to face whatever comes your way if you not uh you can still face it although not to the best of your abilities uh baba you've written a very nice book and i've i've had the pleasure of having gone through it so maybe if you tell us a little bit of a story about how this book came about and what inspired you to write this and why it's helping so many people at the same time that be useful so um i personally went through a very bad phase of uh, insomnia when i couldn't sleep at all and um, you have to remember that i'm a parsi and sleep is kind of built into our genetics <laughs> so so i never ever thought that i would ever have any issues sleeping uh but i abused myself i i just have to say it in that way that there is no kinder way of putting it uh, you know there were too many late nights food all over the place uh, even though i'm a vegetarian you can still have really extreme vegetarian junk food and i did that uh, so uh basically i was setting myself up for a blow there was one night i couldn't sleep at all no no big deal and then another and then another and suddenly i found i simply couldn't sleep at night i was not even getting an hour to i was asleep and because that because of that i was getting brain fog i was um, feeling completely disoriented i felt like i was having jet lag all the time you know uh, i am passionate about teaching i love teaching the art of living courses and i found that i was actually giving away my courses to other people to teach because i was just simply not fit uh and 
I was irritable, grumpy, not something that I am not really. I, I, I lost myself. Uh, then I had a very severe panic attack. And uh, that night I actually had to be sedated. Uh, I thought, okay, once, but it happened again and again. Some three, four times it happened over the, over the next six, eight months. It was, I think, the darkest time of my life. And so I really sat and did research about sleep in the time that I couldn't sleep. And uh, I figured out after reading God knows how many books, reading, you know, going through how many websites, I have no idea, I lost count of all that, that um, getting good sleep is actually not such a big deal. We are all wired to it. But we have been uh, consistently going against what nature intended. And uh, the consequences of that can be disastrous. I realized that sleep is the foundation of everything. Uh, you know, you can have a great diet, you can be exercising, you can be doing all the right things, but if you're not sleeping, your foundation is not there and nothing works. Uh, you know, a lot of you, all of you are, are leading teams of, of many people and therefore you're making decisions every day, which are going to affect the lives of all these people, you know, and it makes me really scared when a person who is in a position of a, when a person who is in a position of power and he says, oh, I get by with four or five hours of sleep and I go, oh my God, you know, I don't know what you're doing to yourself, but I shudder to think what the decisions that you are making is going to affect the people who are working with you. Because I know I went through it, right? I know how it felt. And uh, like we say in the book, the, one of the biggest problems with a person who is sleep deprived is that they don't know they are sleep deprived, right? A person who is drunk knows he's drunk, but a person who is sleep deprived has no idea until they finally collapse, right? Uh, so yeah, so I researched on sleep. I fixed my sleep. In the process, I talked to quite a few people. Uh, quite a few people talked to me saying, Baba, you're doing something about sleep. Even I have sleep issues. What are you doing? Tell me. And so over the course of a few years, I think I must have touched thousand people. Uh, very informally helping them get better sleep and uh, they would always come back saying shit man i had no idea it was so easy small things uh, which with research and science are backed and with personal experience is how this book came about and then of course i didn't want to stop there where okay now you're sleeping well you've got all these all this energy uh, you need to be able to to channel that energy right you need to be able to manifest something really worthwhile in your life. And so we talk about the success aspect where we allow people to define their own version of success and then help them create a roadmap to get out there and achieve it. Create the mindset, create the environment and, uh, and make, it, make their dreams come true. And that's how the book came about. Baba, can I ask you, uh, we were talking about how success is defined differently for different people and also the kind of research you did. I was curious in your research, you know, the definition of good sleep, whether it's in terms of number of hours, time of day, et cetera, whether that is different for different people, depending on physiology, you know, who they are, what life stage they're in, uh, whether, you know, you came across any of, any of that while you were researching the topic. Yes. Uh, when you are, before you are the, uh, sorry, before the age of 18, you require much more sleep. You will see babies will sleep 12, 14, 15 hours a day. Uh, when they go to school, it comes down to about 10, 11 hours a day. But in general, for adults, I would say a minimum sleep opportunity of eight hours every night. So there is a sleep cycle. Uh, sleep cycle consists of going from the awake to the light sleep, to the deep sleep, back out into the light sleep back into awake for a few seconds, maybe a minute or so, and then it continues. So this one cycle is one and a half hours, give or take five, 10 minutes. And you need five sleep cycles at a minimum every night. If you are leading the so-called modern lifestyle, meaning you are not doing massive physical activity. So if you're say going to the gym or cycling or something like that, you may actually need more time. But uh, if, you're, if you're a desk person, then minimum eight hours sleep opportunity every night. The second part of your question, Kanika, whether there is so-called good quality sleep, yes, there is. 
and that's what the book is all about how to improve your time in bed <laughs> if i may call it that uh, how you can get the best bang for your buck uh, for those hours uh, i would say over here that one of the greatest sleep hacks is meditation a person who is a meditator uh, will get into the deeper states of sleep much faster stay there much longer though it's that one and a half hour window for everybody uh, you know a person who is a meditator will get into the good part of sleep much much faster and stay there much much longer than a person who is not and that will show on their face so um, so yeah so you you can get fantastic sleep quality if you meditate uh, that is one of the things of course there are many other things that we've talked about in the book you know a pitch dark bedroom eating dinner say 3 4 hours before bedtime many things are there but uh, i think meditation is one of the baseline things also that can really affect the quality of your sleep in fact uh, just adding to what kanika asked i also wanted to ask so you know i have i've been listening to this solfeggio frequencies right the theta waves and right. alpha waves all of that right does it actually affect uh, does it actually do they actually work i have been you know listening to a lot of music and all those various frequencies trying to figure out is there any palpable difference or does it really affect the quality of the sleep do they actually work any experimented experimental evidence that you have come across i have seen a few bits of um, research which is not really too um, credible but i found that especially when i was in that worst phase of my insomnia uh this helped me for sure once i was much better i couldn't personally couldn't see so much of palpable difference uh i think the best way to find this out for yourself is just to experiment with it and play with it and see how it makes a difference to you if it does sure do we get a translation of what you just said <laughs> so that is uh, Yeah, go ahead, Kaviraj. Why don't you? No, no. These are different frequencies, which kind of affect uh, you know your uh, your uh, brain in a different way, and kind of and there are a lot of musical compositions or waves which have been produced in this. Like so, YouTube has several of them. So you know, I have tried listening to different, and there are different aspects, right? Like so, uh, yeah. But uh, you know, I couldn't figure out any of those palpable differences myself. But I just want to figure out, you know, do they really work? The effect of voice and acoustics on brain right in different ways acoustic waves See, i'll tell you something <clears throat> uh, sound is very very profound for us you know if you look at it in a very mo- at a molecular level we are all atoms and molecules and atoms and molecules are mainly space and sound affects space right so sound is very very basic to us and uh, you will have noticed this you know if especially if you like classical music there will be there will be passages in music that will move you to tears right or uh, there will be there will be times when you just listen to the music and you feel the hair on your body stand right so the sound has a really profound impact on us um <clears throat> and uh, if there are people who have done research on on uh, on on what kaviraj was talking about uh i would actually invite people check it out for yourself figure it out for yourself you know like like he said there are all these uh videos that are there there are all these all this music that's there on on youtube for free just just listen and see how it feels baba you mentioned the six cycles of one and a half hours each any way to split those up if you can't afford you can't afford at a stretch <laughs> well if it happens naturally it's okay uh, so there is something called biphasic sleep where you typically sleep for the first 3 4 hours of your of your night and you wake up at around 3 am 4 am and then you do something for about an hour and a half 2 hours and go back to sleep for the next 3 4 hours uh, this is a fall back from our ancestral days as farmers and people working in the fields the people would get up very early in the morning they would do those chores at that time and then there is nothing to do sun is not up there is no light so they would just go back to sleep and wait for sunrise before they could continue their day so it is perfectly natural if this is it's perfectly good if this is happening naturally for you but 
uh, if you kind of put an alarm to wake up at 3 am and do something and then try to go back to sleep you are messing around with <laughs> what is not natural for you yes we know to happen does that also mean that a one and a half hour to our afternoon nap is better than a power nap actually no <clears throat> because if you take a full one and a half hour nap in the afternoon uh, you will have stripped your brain of adenosine which is the sleep pressure chemical and that will mess up with your sleep happening in the night uh so you will you will feel sleepy much later than you you should ideally however an afternoon nap should be approximately half an hour and that will keep you going really nicely the whole evening till your genetic bedtime so nasa has just done some research on this and 26 minutes is the perfect time for an afternoon nap With, uh, with reference to this genetic bedtime i i was reading that there's this thing called there's a sleep train that leaves at 10 am 10 pm or there's a sleep train that leaves at 2 pm so if you don't get the 10 pm sleep train you're cursed to not have good quality sleep until you can fall asleep at 2 pm and in my own experience i've seen it that if i don't have my early dinner and if i don't get to bed by 10 then i'm going to stay awake till roughly about 1 or 2 right. which's a through back to the campus waiting for the chai or but... yes <laughs> i think we all can uh, you know relate to that uh, 2 am sleep but um, it's not just 10 pm uh, it can be different for different people so uh there is something called a chronotype chronotype chrono is time and type is type so um everybody has a kind of a genetically imprinted chronotype that they inherit when they they are born and some of us will find it very easy to sleep earlier in the evening 8 pm 8:30 pm 9 pm something like that and others will find it that 8 and 8:30 is impossible for them but they need to sleep 10:30 11 and then still others will want to sleep at 1 am 2 am even 3 am uh this is fine as long as it is yours so a person who normally sleeps or who 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 for whom sleep comes naturally at 1 am should not try to sleep at 10 uh, 10 pm similarly a person who is naturally sleeping at 10 pm should not try to sleep at 1 uh your your whole body's uh systems are geared towards your sleep time and wake up time and if you can figure out your natural genetic sleep time and wake up time and stick to that you will be blessed with such bountiful health health you you will not believe it. you will not believe you can be so healthy that's a really interesting point baba about the, these chronotypes because I, i had kind of raised this on the group because i feel that i'm that chronotype to you know midnight or one and that's just my best best sleep then but then how do you kind of you know marry it up with the real world right uh, <laughs> cool cool times this is, corporate timings <laughs> yes this this i agree kanika is a challenge uh, but uh, you know you need to you need to negotiate it out and uh, Uh, you i any employ, employer or any business uh, will always benefit from their employees being at their prime uh, of productivity and uh, if you can if you can talk it out with the people who you work with and say hey you know what <laughs> i am at my most productive at 10 am please don't call me to office at 8 am i'm just zombified then right uh, i think uh, it will be better for the for the office that you for the for the organization that you are working with and it will be dramatically better for you as well but before you do that you need to really figure out whether that is really your chronotype or it is just a bad habit so this is something that that needs to be looked at so baba my daughter uh, she says that over the over the weekdays can i sleep late and i'm going to recover all that lost sleep over the weekend and uh, well i empathize given i've done the same when i was young 
what do you think about it what does what do you say it's a very bad idea uh, your body our bodies are used to habit they love schedules you will notice that when your sleep wake up time and meal times are set uh, you are at another level of productivity and creativity in your life yeah when you do this when you every 5 days you are sleeping late and then over the weekend you are sleeping longer it's like uh, creating a sort of jet lag within yourself see you will find that people who do this on monday are are completely disoriented in the morning you know monday morning blues what we call it you know nobody likes to go to work or oh, hard one whole week now how will i manage da, 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 da. but do you notice this is the exact same symptom that happens when you travel international right in fact this is called social jet lag and uh, <clears throat> because our bodies get cues uh, about where you are through light so you know say for 5 days in a week you are seeing light at 7 o'clock in the morning and for the next two days you are seeing light at say 10 30 or 11 in the morning it's like you have flown from bombay to london without leaving bombay and so on monday you are getting that uh effect of the jet lag that your body has experienced simply because you have seen light that much later right so it is actually called social jet lag and chronic social jet lag now uh, you can imagine it is like what happens to these aerostasis and 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 uh, and pilots you know they uh, they have major health challenges as they grow older so please educate your daughter about it and <clears throat> one of the things that we say for sleep hygiene is wake up at the same time every day even on weekends thank you baba how do i explain it to my daughter that weekends are for waking up early at 7 because i think the whole psychology is weekends is for late sleep um more or less by doing it yourself and scheduling all the fun things in the morning that's even tough <laughs> <laughs> right like uh, uh, if if it starts as a family tradition that okay you know we go to the park in the morning at 7 and we play frisbee over there and after that we go and have some croissants or something like that and that becomes a a scheduled activity for the family every saturday and sunday morning you will find that the children will feel very left out if you don't take them and they will just comply good idea Thanks. in fact uh, adding to what uh, sandeep said like you know on the children side um, does it also i mean is it the total number of hours of sleep or the timing also is very specific for example in our case what i find is that our children how much ever we try it like you know they never go to sleep at 10 or 10:30 they stay awake till like 12 and so, you know that are your children are your children teenagers already no how old are they uh eight and a half and four and a half oh they need to sleep early <clears throat> so uh, if they are four and a half and eight and a half uh, you know you will need to you will need to shut down yourself and uh, you know go into the bedroom with them read them bedtime story do whatever it requires to get them to sleep in that time and uh, then get continue with the rest of your evening if you wish to uh, so as a parent you will need to take that responsibility uh, when your children become teenagers their whole sleep cycle automatically naturally shifts to much later uh, so when i hear parents saying that oh my son does not sleep till 1 am that is normal that is okay that will come back when they come back when they get to 21 or 22 they will come back to their actual sleep rhythm uh, this is again a throwback <clears throat> from evolution where you want the youngest and strongest to be awake at night to protect the village right so that is why teenagers will their sleep cycle is naturally you know shifted by about 2 to 3 hours and <clears throat> all of you as as parents i would really really tell you i mean you guys are fairly influential if you can get schools to start their their start time at around 10 am instead of the usual 8 am or 7 am uh this will do a world of good to your children because your children need that time to sleep and there is something called the growth hormone that is created for children in during the during sleep which uh basically strengthens them allows their bodies and minds to grow 
and creates a very very strong immune system so by allowing your children that rest you are setting them up for great health throughout their life so uh, this is something that you know <clears throat> finland has done finland is considered one of the uh, best educational countries in the world uh, one of the, the like the top country for getting education today is finland and the law over there says that no school college or uh, university can open before 10 am they have to start at 10 am yeah so this is something that you could uh, you could really start influencing schools colleges in your where your children are studying to to delay the beginning of school and for sure your kids need to sleep earlier now if they are used to sleeping late you cannot get them to sleep at 7 o'clock tomorrow uh, you know if they are used to sleeping at say 10 o'clock then first get them at 9:30 for about 15 days then get them to 9 o'clock for the next 15 20 days then leave them there at for a month then get them to maybe you know 8:30 and then finally to 8 o'clock which is a good time for them to go to bed agree and i think it's also got to do because of this online schooling right so they get to stay at home during the day time so invariably in the afternoon there are a couple of hours you know after the lunch maybe at about 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock or 4 to 6 they end up sleeping right so right. that actually changes the cycle absolutely and you know absolutely. then so you, you then, need to keep them awake at that time you know you and the days when they are not sleeping in the afternoon they are kind of exhausted by it's 10 10 30 and they go to bed otherwise they stay awake till like 12 whatever time right <laughs> not a good idea at all i know that's uh, that's very um, useful advice baba for parents and you know i belong to the club of parents that deals that that is dealing with a child that doesn't want to go to bed any time before 10:30 11 12 um the other thing i wanted to say in the context of everything that we are saying is that there is also uh, there is also the culture there's a, we, we we've grown up in a culture which celebrates waking up early and the ones that wake up early are supposed to be the brighter more diligent more hard working ones so early to bed and early to rise makes a man whatever healthy wealthy and wise is something that we all grew up provided that your chronotype yeah exactly so what uh, in my own uh, as as someone who is a, a late riser uh, i'm taking this little opportunity to uh, request that we get become less judgmental about people who are late risers uh, it's not as if you know as as uh, speaking for that community of late risers i'd like to say that it's not as if um, uh, it's under under our control it just so happens that we tend to do better if we get our extra hour of sleep in the morning absolutely you know there is that 5 am club i think i have, i'm going to write some 9 am or 10 am club book which will <laughs> which will become a best seller just like that because of the title <laughs> um you you're right shiva speaking if i may before before we get to that since you speak about writing your next uh with your permission can i share the name of the next you are thinking of yeah for sure <laughs> everybody here is going to write a chapter in that at the start of this call before we just started this call shiju was about to suggest that our batch collectively write a book on losing sleep since 2002 No, but there is there is merit to that. Is practically speaking, a lot of us will have very physical constraints with respect to the times that we can actually find a physical bed to get into. So it's uh, and sometimes sometimes you don't have a choice around that. The challenge then shifts to if you can't manage the time, how do you manage the energy? And managing the energy through the day, through the different times when you need to be at your uh, when you need to be a, a extremely aware and extremely Uh, deliberate in whatever you do, that um, that could benefit significantly from a better quality of sleep, even if the number of hours is not enough. So, what would you suggest for for optimizing that? And um, apologies in advance for using a very modern capitalistic word for optimization, but you know, practically speaking, some of that, some of those tips about improving the quality of sleep would really help us. hope with the lack of it from time to time and of course there are times when you don't have to do all of that few if it is a lack of sleep from time to time once in a while it doesn't matter 
okay uh, but when it becomes chronic when you are sleeping late on a very regular basis or wake, not getting your 8 hours of sleep uh, <clears throat> it is then that you are inviting a lot of very unpleasant health conditions into your life uh, as you grow older the brain diseases the degenerative brain diseases parkinsons alzheimers and dementia are all 100% linked to not enough sleep so um, if your plan is to stay on the planet for an extended period of time sleep uh, if you have a much shorter term vision like okay when i'm 50 i'm going to kick the bucket then it's okay right but if you are going to be here for the you know 70 80 years old and really want to 100 years old why not uh, and want to have a life of productivity creativity all the way to the end then you will have to give time to sleep now uh, you know for sleep and exercise whenever people tell me i don't have the time to sleep i don't have the time to exercise then all i can tell them is then you will have to make time for being ill there is no other way right so uh i can give you all the sleep optimization techniques that i have learned but unless you give yourself that 8 hour sleep opportunity every night uh you are fooling yourself into thinking that uh you know because i have a dark bedroom because i'm eating dinner early because i'm doing x y z a b c uh i will be healthy you are simply not getting enough the body is not getting enough time to recharge itself and soon you will be running on fumes you will not have you not you're not even on reserve anymore you're on fumes and then you know what happens after that you know you 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 basically set your set yourself up for disaster and from my experience i can tell you <clears throat> it is a lot of time that's wasted in becoming all right i have one coaching client uh he runs a multi million he runs i think three or four multi million dollar uh, businesses in america and uh, his habit was working 40 hour days he would work 40 hours non stop before he slept and he did it for a few years okay and uh, his idea of relaxation was going to the gym and lifting weights so he is built like one powerful person you know he is really really well built so when you look at him you say oh my god what a super healthy super fit person this is but he was completely finished inside one day he collapsed at work and he woke up in a hospital and it took him more than 2 years to recover fortunately he had the uh, leadership ability to create people uh, you know to to run his company and so when he was not able to do anything those people kind of took over and uh, he still remained uh, very much a multi million dollar person when he came to me for coaching he told me just this he told me baba i want to become how you how i used to be and i said if you are going to want to that then you go to somebody else i will teach you how to become so that you know you respect your body and respect your mind and then still have uh, the productivity that you are that that you are used to and today after about a year and a half two years of uh, you know working with me he is in top physical condition and his businesses are doing really well his employees are very happy in fact he's one of those people who has a whole uh, you know setup in india and he has made it so that nobody needs to work more than 11:30 in the night like 11:30 in the night even the us clients are told or, you know i shifted to some other unit so that his employees over here in india get that uh, you know that time to sleep so that's a good tip that's a good tip and i've often found it help uh, to switch off at least 45 minutes before you intend to sleep whatever time you intend to do the last brain activating activity needs to be 45 you know and i am in the opposite camp to at least shiva and kanika that i know for sure the <laughs> wake up are are prone to waking up late if if conditions permit uh, but i'm in the opposite camp i usually even if i sleep fairly late i end up waking up early um and it's been on since uh, since i was a kid i think i was naturally waking up between 5 to 6 at any point throughout my school and i couldn't help it i couldn't even if i tried to sleep i couldn't sleep longer than that um it it just turned out that way uh, over time though i realized that whenever i've slept late whenever i when for example if it's 3 or 4 in the morning and i haven't yet had the chance to go to bed 
those are the times when I've made my absolute worst decisions. Because it's, it's been sleep deprived. I've made absolutely the worst mistakes of my life at that time. Uh, you know, uh, the information processing capacity or whatever is severely diminished. But in the morning is when I'm naturally uh, very prone to fresh perspective and it, it, everything feels like a bit of fresh air. So that's, that's been a challenge for me trying to sleep late if I've uh, if sleeping late, if I've uh, gone to bed a little bit later, I always end up sleep, waking up earlier no matter what time I go to go to bed. And uh, therefore the only solution seems to be to try and get to bed early, <laughs> you know, uh, find, ways, find ways and means around it. And, and uh, hopefully that works. Hopefully that buys us a little bit more time on the planet. So, Baba, I would just, like to uh, uh, Deepak, before you start, I know you've been uh, wanting to ask something, but before you before you say this, uh, because we have got an early bird and we have got a night owl in our group here, uh, the, uh, the University of Reading actually has done research which has proved that a person who is, who is an early bird, like Piyush, if he tries to do productive work later during the day, he will fail miserably. Similarly, a person who is a night owl like Shiva or like Kanika, if they try to do productive work early in the morning, they fail. So it is not about waking up early to you know the 5 a.m. club. It is not about that. It is about respecting your genetic blueprint of your chronotype and adjusting your life to that. And of course, this can become quite interesting when the husband is a night owl and the wife is an early bird, and, and, and it can lead to a lot of, a uh, lot of interesting, you know, uh, Hindi TV serial kind of scenarios. But uh, you need to work with what you have. You have been given these cards, and you need to work with those cards rather than trying to get some other cards and playing that hand. Yeah, Deepak, your question. Yeah. So, uh, Baba, I love my sleep. I get into deep sleep quickly. I have no problem sleeping. I can sleep within a minute of uh, going to bed. So I have absolutely no issues on that. And I sleep for uh, a good seven, eight hours. I think what happens is as a result of it, uh, I don't get the time to exercise or do physical activity. So if you have to prioritize between sleep and exercise, uh, how would you uh, how would you comment on that? Because I I prioritize sleep uh, anytime and uh, I've been doing that ever since uh, I was young. But a lot of people tell me you're now in your 40s, you need to exercise, you know, a lot of things are happening. So uh, so just want to hear your thoughts on that. You have to do both. You cannot ask me to choose between seeing and hearing. Correct? You have to do both. Uh, you have to find the time for yourself. Uh, you have to realize that finally, health and well-being is what is the cornerstone of any sort of success. Uh, if you want to create something amazing for yourself, for your family, for your community, uh, you need to be able to have your system uh, prime for that. And exercise, diet, Shiva can talk a lot, a lot about diet. Uh, exercise, diet, sleep uh, are just some things that you cannot compromise on. I would add a fourth thing, learning and then meditation. So continuous learning, continuously updating and upgrading yourself, not only just in your field, but even other fields, uh, you know, which, which might be completely different from what you, what you, what is your primary profession. The, the brain research says that uh, if you take up something which is completely unrelated to what you primarily do, just studying that to a degree of expertise will allow you to become even better at what you primarily do. So uh, say for example, a chartered accountant taking up craniosacral therapy, which is a touch healing modality, an alternative healing modality. Uh, this would make him an even better chartered accountant. Uh, so says the brain research. So learning, meditation, sleep, diet, exercise. These are my five secrets, if you may, to uh, success, but more towards a, a sense of well-being on a day-to-day -day basis. 
and you need to make time for that there is no no two ways about it there's no hack that you have in your book <laughs> Yeah, another question i was uh, curious uh, you know uh, when you look at uh, images of somebody like buddha the buddha is always sleeping in one posture uh, is there anything about the posture uh, that's got to do with the quality of sleep or you know can you just find some time increase the quality of your sleep by doing something like that and make time for something else <laughs> so like i said meditation is a great hack because it allows you a little bit of leeway uh you know uh kaviraj was uh, kaviraj was saying no about uh, uh the the sleep on the weekends mm. so uh if you are a meditator you could get away with a little bit of that uh, it's something called sleep debt that you get if you if you don't sleep your 8 hours and you have a very limited period of time in which to pay it off uh that window increases when you meditate so uh yeah there are a few things like that that can be done but the best is to stay with nature and you know you know it is interesting to know that human beings are the only species on the planet that willingly delay their sleep no other species does it yeah so uh, it's just giving priority and time to yourself so that you can become better at whatever it is that you are you know i think uh, just adding to you know what deepak was say but uh, that way like life itself is if you look at the occupational hazards life itself is very unfair right you look at doctors nurses or journalists or like you know people who have alternate shifts and that were not in a in a cadence or any of that but uh, today it's it, it becomes like 24 hours of work at a stretch right or army people or any of that right i know journalists who work today morning shift tomorrow again is morning shift day after it becomes like night shift two night shifts at a stretch it's completely half a hazard right so i don't think the body gets to become a rhythm or a cadence in any of that right like it's correct so do we have any data that says that these people actually tend to live shorter than yes. the others yes. who have a yes. you know a structured the, life the who has actually um has actually declared that shift working is a known carcinogen uh, not enough sleep actually activates certain genes in you which cause cancer so for sure uh, and it is quite ironical that most of the people like this who are working in emergency services who are working to create a safe secure environment for us to thrive in themselves are playing by they are paying with their blood and uh, i really urge or from my side i would say to governments and you know wherever they are working those those institutions to give them much more money than what they are getting to compensate for this because they are they are literally putting their lives on line so that uh, we can be safe and secure one question baba uh, yes. adding on to what uh, deepak said and what kavira said so 8 hours of uh, sleep or 1 hour of exercise uh modern work culture is let's say 10 hours of uh, working so that's 90 and then you add maybe an hour or two on eating and your various coffee breaks and dinner and then another one hour uh, which which the bathroom would take uh, between morning evening and such so when do you have time left to live <laughs> just two yeah. hours a day yeah uh i would say that you are giving too much time for this 10 hour work day is not acceptable for me uh and i think a lot of times that 10 hour work day happens because people are so chronically sleep deprived or because they don't have that proper lifestyle habits that they simply are not efficient you know if you focus on the efficiency part of it i don't think you need to work 10 hours uh i don't i don't think so at all you you can dramatically cut down the number of hours you work you know i know people who work in europe for example 6 pm means they in the middle of the email they will shut their laptop and get out you know uh it's just us who kind of uh, uh do this to us and uh, it's it's up to you you know you have to you have to you have to draw your line there and say no this is not something i will do i have a life 
Baba, I would disagree there. I, I think it's easy to generalize by cultures, but having worked in multiple cultures, uh, you know, it's not, unfortunately, I, I live in Europe, right? Okay. It's, it's different across different industries is what I would say. Okay. And, 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 you know, Kaviraj was talking about occupational hazards. It's, um, but there are some jobs which require, it's 10 hours, 12 hours is easy, right? You're, you're never off. You have, if your client sends you an email at 12 o'clock asking for something at 6 a.m. next morning, it will be ready at 6 a.m. next morning, right? So it's almost, it's almost that cultures, the corporate cultures uh, and expectations and, that get created. And, and Kanika, we have to change it. Now, somewhere you'll have to draw the line. Like now, for example, for me, my phone is off at 10 p.m. It's off. I go on airplane mode. You cannot contact me. It's again on only at 7 a.m. So people in the beginning were like, you are not contactable. What if there is an emergency? No, what emergency is going to happen? What will happen between 10 a.m., uh, you know, 10 p.m. and 7 a.m.? It's okay. I, I don't mind. So, uh, I mean, you know, with Art of Living also, everything is always important and urgent. Everything has to be delivered day before yesterday. So, I did that for a long time. And then I said, no, I'm not going, I don't subscribe to this at all anymore because it's screwing up my health. Right? And uh, in the beginning, there was a lot of resistance. But basically, if you're really good at what you do, People will say, Acha bhai, bas tum raho, you know, and, uh, and, and, and you kind of get away with it. And, and hopefully other people learn and the work culture becomes better. I mean, the culture is what? It's just you and me, right? It's, it's people, right? So yeah, I agree with you, Kanika. There are certain industries, there are certain uh, types of uh, jobs in which that being available 24 by 7 may be a requirement, but can we do something to change that? Uh, because no. in the long run, it's it's not good for you. It's not good for the organization. It's not good for the clients. It's not good for the customers. It's a lose, lose, lose everywhere. No, like, I, I, I agree. You know, like Pure said that when I have not slept, I am making the most horrendous decisions of my life. Uh, you owe it to your employer, you owe it to your company, you owe it to your team that you are able to take good decisions. Right? And that's, there is no compromise on that. Unfortunately, the only way to charge a mobile phone is to charge a mobile phone. There is no other way you can do it. You can't leave it out in the sun and hope that it charges, right? At least not yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, it's like that. Yeah, but, you know, I also want to ask one more thing. See, one is this uh, physiological requirement to sleep. But even if you have slept for like, say, 15 hours or 16 hours at a stretch, when you go back to the office, if the meetings are not interesting, right, there are times when you again fall asleep, right? And even if you have not slept for like 24 hours at a stretch, when you actually go to the office and if something is interesting, your body keeps awake, yeah. right? You don't have to force yourself. You are wide awake, like, you know, uh, even... So there is something beyond this forced sleep of whatever 12 hours or eight hours or 10 hours or whatever it is right how your body responds uh, so isn't that also an important factor that like you know how stimulating the external environment is or how soporific the you know the external environment is yes but there is a but i agree i mean we've all all been to some of india's most amazing educational institutions and there are lectures in which you sleep and there are lectures in which when you are really tired, you are still awake. Yes. And I, I guess that translates into the corporate environment as well. But wherever you are, if you have sleep with you, if you have meditation with you, then uh, even in the most soporific lectures, you still manage to absorb something. And of course, when things are really interesting, uh, you have a, you are in a position to really shine. Right. I guess that, that brings us to that that success part, you know, why is a person or why is a meeting boring in the first place? Uh, what are you doing over there? If you're finding this so boring and so, uh, so much of drudgery, maybe you have to think of something else. You know, maybe you have to rethink your life. And that's where that success part of it goes. But the rethinking itself doesn't happen because most of us don't have the time. You are like, like, uh, you know, you said you, you've got, uh, where is the time to live? You know, you forget about where is the time to think? Uh, so, so taking a few breaks uh, 
and actually scheduling in vacations and making sure that work doesn't creep into those vacations uh, maybe some 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 of the best things that you can do for yourself uh, i actually have an observation for all of us right now 20 21 years ago when we were studying together what were we thinking of we were thinking of perhaps grades or we were thinking of our careers some of us maybe were thinking of relationships so success plus plus right what have we spoken of over the last several minutes today our topic for today was sleep and success i think i have only heard a discussion on sleep and um, it's interesting, none of us, I think at that time, thought about sleep. Nobody I knew at least thought about the correlation of sleep and success back then. Um, and what's even more interesting is, Baba and I had recently put out a survey to two sets of people. One was to a wider set of people. And um, there was a question around how many of you take your sleep seriously? And the answer was only about 30%. And then we put out another survey, which I know some of you graciously filled, thank you. Um, this was a dipstick that was put out only to very established, accomplished people. So a subset of people who the world would regard as being successful. And what do you think that percentage was? What percentage of us do you think took our sleep seriously? I'd probably say 50%. 50. Anybody else? 70. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. There's, there's absolutely no doubt. We, and the reason I asked previous questions on the optimization is um, for several instances when you know that there are certain times that you can actually sleep or you'll, you'll have a hotel room or um, there's a time that you can check in and check out and move on. Uh, you, we try and optimize it to the mid. We want to extract as much sleep as, as, as possible. And I'm not part of that subset of successful people, but for us, like I said at the beginning, sleep is a secret weapon. As much as we can, at every instance that we can, we need to extra productivity boost and, and use it to the best effect. So let me just let, let us uh, kind of uh, bring this discussion to a close with uh, three big sleep hacks. All right. So the first is a pitch dark bedroom. Uh, you should not, you know, it should be so dark that if you hold your hand out in front of you, you cannot see it that dark. So, you know, the air conditioner light, the mobile phone charging light, all those need to be eliminated. What I do is I put band aid. <laughs> whenever I, when, you know, whenever I travel, people always say Baba has been here because there is a bandit on the air conditioner. So uh, really go paranoid about the pitch darkness of your bedroom. Uh, when it is pitch dark, you will find that you sleep much better because the waking up happens through light, which which is uh, which comes through your eyes even when the eyes are closed. All right, so that's number one. Um, Number two, I would say is making sure that you don't have any sort of caffeine after 2 p.m. So caffeine is 4x more potent at robbing your sleep than light. 4x more. So no, you are welcome to have your teas and your coffees, but not after 2 p.m. Hmm? Because uh, tea and coffee will hang around in your system for about seven, eight hours and not allow you to sleep then. So if you have, say, tea at 5 p.m., seven hours means you cannot start feeling sleepy before 12. Okay. So that's the second one. No caffeine after 2 p.m. And uh, finally, I would say uh, early dinner, like three to four hours before your bedtime. Say you're going to sleep at 11 p.m., finish your dinner by 7 p.m. Uh, that will go a very, very long way in helping with the restorative and rejuvenative process that the body goes through. So for the body, the digestion is paramount. It will put everything on hold until it finishes, until it finishes digestion. So if you have a late dinner and go to sleep, the rest and rejuvenation part of the system is only going to become much, is only going to start much later once the digestion is over. 
So you want to finish the digestion before you get into bed so that you get the full bang for your buck uh, for the sleep, right? So these three things, uh, I guess, would be my top three sleep hacks. A very dark bedroom, uh, no caffeine after 2 p.m., and an early dinner, preferably an early light dinner, uh, so that you are really done with the digestion before you hit the bed. Uh, so that your body goes directly into that restorative, rejuvenative sleep rather than spend time uh, sitting and digesting what you, what you just ate. So, Piyush, that's your answer for you. If, if you Got it. Doing these three things. <laughs> on the money, Baba. On the money. Thanks a lot, uh, people, for, for your time, for this really cool discussion. I'm sure uh, all our viewers, uh, both on LinkedIn and on YouTube, are going to benefit a lot from what we've talked talked about today and i hope we can get together like this you know once every three months four months and, and have this kind of a conversation because so many things come up which can which can make a difference to so many people right so from uh, from us from dnd tv i hope you enjoyed it i hope you enjoyed today's uh, little interaction with uh, Kishita and her illustrious batch of 2002 from the iim and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you, Baba. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Baba. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment below. And remember to subscribe to our channel BND TV so that every time we put out a video, you get a notification right into your inbox. Remember to hit that bell button though, because that's when the magic happens.